All right, in this lesson, I just wanted to reiterate the process of executing a cell in a Jupyter Notebook. The code that you write in a cell, regardless of whether it's Python code or Markdown code, is not valid until the cell is actually executed manually. And there's two ways that you can execute a cell. You can do Shift plus Enter and Control plus Enter. So let's begin with Shift plus Enter. If I enter a valid Python code here, like something simple, 1 plus 1, in order to execute this, in order to actually get this to render, I have to uh, execute the cell. When I do Shift plus Enter, it executes the code cell and moves to the next cell. So you can see my uh, highlighter is now around this code cell execution cell, and it's moved on from the cell that it was previously in. Now I'm in a markdown cell. You can tell because I have this markdown written up top here. Executing a markdown cell will render the formatting within it. So if I don't execute it, I'm just going to get this. When I execute this, execute this with Shift plus Enter, it's going to do that, move on to the next cell in the notebook. If I'm in the very last cell in the notebook, for example here, and I enter anything, valid Python code for example, I'm going to do x equals 5, and I want to output x plus 3. Whenever it's the last cell in a notebook, pressing Shift plus Enter will execute the code cell and move to the next cell, just like usual, but it's going to generate that fresh cell for us. So at the bottom, if I press Shift Enter, there you can see the output is 8, and you can see a brand new cell has been generated below. Now this is generally the approach that I typically use, just Shift Enter, but there is an alternative which is Control plus Enter. The only difference uh, with that is Control plus Enter stays in the cell that you currently executed. So for example, if I write something here like 3 plus 3, and I press Control Enter, you can see it's executed that cell, but it has not moved to the next one, and thus at the end of the notebook it also has not uh, generated a fresh cell below for us. Similarly, if I go here and I execute this with Control plus Enter, you can see that it stayed in that cell. It has switched, by the way, from Edit Mode to Command Mode, but it hasn't moved down one cell. Finally, there's one important tidbit that is going to be perhaps a little bit confusing at first, but that is critical to understanding a Jupyter Notebook. Multiple operations can take place in a single cell. But what the cell will automatically output is only going to be the last expression. That does not mean that the cell is not evaluated. Every line in a cell will be evaluated. But the only thing you're going to see in the output by default is the very last line. So for example, if I have 1 plus 1 here, and then let's say 2 plus 2, and then 3 plus 3, I have three lines of code here. Behind the scenes, Python is going to calculate all of these three calculations for us. But when I execute this, the only thing that's going to appear below the cell is 6 which is the result of this final evaluation or this final expression. So the very last thing in the cell is the only thing that's going to be output below. That does not mean that the rest of the work is lost. So for example, if I assign this operation to A and I assign this operation to B, when I execute this, I'm not going to see any evidence that A is now 2 and B is now equal to 4, but behind the scenes, those variables are now storing those values. The other thing to recognize is that this is kind of an independent environment. So you don't have to execute cells in order. So in this case, we ex executed the cell, and so we have A and B now stored in variables. That does not mean that I have to write them below this cell necessarily. I can output A in the cell above. There is my A value. I can output B here. There is that value. I can do A plus B in the cell above. I can go back and execute this cell. You can basically execute cells in any order that you wish. This is not kind of an environment where it reads, you know, top to bottom of every single cell. Every cell is completely an autonomous independent unit with its own code. So you can basically structure your code in any way you want, play around, see what happens when you execute one thing first, another thing first. If you like a certain flow, you're always welcome to just select a cell and then use these up and down keys to move it. So let's say I wanted to have this code at the very top. I can just press up, up, up and now it's in that order. But just because it's written in a certain order in the notebook does not mean that it has to be executed in that order. You are more than welcome to jump around from cell to cell. You are more than welcome to execute a cell two times in a row, three times in a row. You are more than welcome to skip any other cell in sequence. That's what makes this notebook such a powerful learning tool, is everything is kind of separated and independent, and you can basically pick which puzzle piece you want to play around with one by one. So that's a little bit about the execution of cells within a Jupyter notebook.